coming up in this show, I'm going to discuss 13 crime, mystery and thriller novels featuring characters who are journalists. You're listening to the Thriller Novel Nerd Podcast, a virtual book club for readers of mystery, thriller and suspense novels. Twice a month, I will bring you a short discussion about what makes a great thriller, as well as latest reads over a cup of tea. And who am I? I'm your host, thriller author, Amelia D. Hay. Hello, book lovers. As you can guess by the super spoilery title of this video, I'm going to discuss 13 crime, mystery and thriller novels featuring characters who are journalists. I've decided to divide this video up into two parts. Books I want to read and books that I've read. Just to make things a little easier for the sake of transparency so you can see that I haven't just curated a list of books that I've read a good portion of them and these are the books that are waiting on my Kindle through to prior purchases or books I've discovered actually in, a, in an attempt to curate the list. Just because I sort of feel like in in places like booktube and the podcasting world and content creation I think a little bit of transparency is never going to hurt anyone and I actually did wait quite a while before I put this video and podcast episode out purely for the fact that I didn't like the fact that I hadn't read as many books on the list as I wanted to so I went through and I made sure that the majority of the books that are in this list are actually in the books I've read category just so I'm keeping things honest. My love of characters who are journalists stems from two places. The first is my love of the Superman story. And the second, which is directly related to the first, is my love of the hit 90s show Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Yes, that's the title. It's got a huge long title. I'm not going to lie. 14 year old me really loved the show. And in particular, I had a huge crush on Dean Kane. But not Dean Kane as Superman, but Dean Kane as Clark Kent. What can I say? I've always loved nerds. But I also loved Lois. I could relate to her. She was stubborn, ambitious and was obsessed with her work. 14 year old Amelia wanted to be Lois Lane when she grew up and there's a part of me that still does even though I am turning. I think this might be my last year in my 30s. My god, yeah, there's a still part of me that wants to be Lois when I grow up. This episode originally had 16 books, but as I was curating the list, I realised that a couple of the books had plots centering around deaths of toddlers or young children. My family has been through the tragedy of losing an older infant to Sid. When I was five years old, as I've grown up, got married and considered having my own family, I've come to realise that this event has had a profound effect upon me it's just I didn't realize it as a child or as a teenager but as I've entered my 30s and 40s I realized that yeah this is a I guess you could say quite a triggering thing for me I removed the books from my to read list purely because I thought they would be quite triggering in general I tend to stop reading books that feature investigations of crimes against children and minors under the age of 18 I did start reading a book that opens with the aftermath of a death of a young teenage girl and I got the hint the crime had a sexual element and I immediately closed the book and I have no intention of opening that book up because of the content. I, with that book I don't think I got past the prologue or the first chapter. I can't remember if it was a prologue or a first chapter and the book was actually I was quite surprised because the book was written by a quite a well-known author and I was quite taken back by it. If I do find something that I'm just not happy with I'm probably not going to talk about it or reference the book on my podcast or YouTube channel because it's not cool doing that. I think if just because I don't like a book doesn't mean that it's bad. It doesn't mean that someone else would would enjoy it and find it interesting and would want to know who committed the crime and see them brought to justice. But because I've got these things that are quite triggering, I can't read books like that because it's very, I don't know, I just find that type of thing disturbing. But I know there are other people out there who probably have more high tolerance to crimes against people than what I do. And to be honest, there are certain curse words and racial slang that I can't handle hearing either, even if it's in the context of the era and it makes sense for the character. Some, it's not sometimes, there are just certain words which I will not repeat here that I just, I can't get past it. So I deleted another book for that reason as well. I think I only down, I think I ended up purchasing the book, but I got, and I flipped through, I can't remember if I purchased the book or if I just downloaded 
the um, sample chapter and I saw it and it made sense for this particular character in the era it made sense for that particular character to be saying something like that but I was just like if this story follows this person I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to enjoy the story and I'm not going to get past it and I'm pretty sure the author probably doesn't want me talking about their book in the podcast that way. No one appreciates a me talking about that book and saying I didn't like it. It doesn't add value to the book buying community, me saying, oh, I don't like this book purely because it, it's personal taste. It's just because I don't like something doesn't mean someone else won't and that's another reason why you won't find negative book reviews. I have considered writing them, trust me, and then I've realised, oh, actually, I think this is more my own ego and me not liking something. So just to recap, I'm not saying that those books are bad. They were just not for me. And it's also worth pointing out that these books have a significant number of good reviews. I'm talking reviews that are like three star upwards. That's what I would consider a relatively good review. I sort of consider three star they liked it four is good five is excellent when I read it again and they had a good portion of the four and five star reviews as well as three it's just I'm not that their target market and that's okay so without further ado let's get into my list of books that I want to read because I'm yet to read these books I will be taking the description of the plot from the blurbs book on an online store that I've purchased it from, whether it's Amazon or like Waterstones or a Foils bookstore website, but I've ta that's where I've taken these. Because I haven't read it, I want to describe what happens in the book, talk about a few other things that relate to the book's genre, just to help you decide whether this is an interesting book for you and whether you want to read it or not. So I have written all this down on my phone, so you'll probably see me reading from my phone quite a bit. And it's purely because I want to get the plot description correct. The first book is See Her Run by Peggy Townsend. By the way, throughout this episode, I probably will be butchering a few author names. Like, I've really tried to make sure that my pronunciation is correct, but there's a good chance it may not be. So, sorry if I've just butchered your name. I guess you're not watching this, so... Fingers crossed. Aloha Snow is a former journalist who was let go from her job in the LA Times. And when I read the book description, I got the sense that she had done something that contributed to her being let go from her job, but it was a little bit unclear. And I wasn't quite sure about the wording, so I did leave it out. I thought it's worth mentioning because it adds an extra element to the plot and the events of the book. And now she gets one more shot to prove she has what it takes with a story to die for. Based on that description, you can probably tell that that book is a mystery and you can also put it in the women's sleuths category. At the moment, it seems to be a huge trend where there's a lot of books featuring women's sleuths that are sort of creeping up in the bestseller charts and that's always a good thing. And I hope it does continue. I hope it's not like a temporary trend. I hope it, this is, does some, this is something that's here to stay because I do definitely do enjoy these books and just to also let you know which is which is also important this is actually the first book in a mystery series naturally featuring Aloha Snow. At the moment there seems to be only two books in the series but I'm hoping the publisher will there'll be a third book and this series will continue but the second book is called The Thin Edge and it was published in May 2019 and if they continue the publishing trend with the series that means there's a book due out in June 2020 and we usually with the publishing with traditional publishing they advertise the, the pre-order months in advance. I can't actually see a book three on Amazon or any of the bookstores that doesn't necessarily mean there isn't it just means I can't find it but I hope there is I really do I love the cover I'll put the cover up on these books as I'm talking about it and reading the description of the plot but I found the cover quite intriguing as well as the story which is why this book ended up in my never-ending TBR list pile maybe it's more of a mountain range now Sorry, if you see me scratching throughout this video, I honestly can't help it. I've um I have some type of skin irritation allergy, possibly to a detergent or something, and I'm taking an over-the-counter antihistamine. And in the UK, the over-the-counter antihistamines aren't that powerful, so I'm taking one every I'm taking a tablet every four hours, which is as directed on the box and I can only take six a day and it takes a while. I need to get the antihistamine into my system for it to take a, a full effect and it doesn't seem to be working at the moment and I can't help it like I can resist for a while but after a while I just I do 
I can't help it like I need to scratch. It's a nightmare. I'm starting to get a backlog of videos that I want to do and I thought I don't just want to drop this, I want to keep going with it. So that's why I'm sort of torturing myself a little bit. The second book is The Dying Hour by Rick Mofina, and I've actually purchased this book a long time ago. I think it was back in 2018, if memory serves me correctly. So it's been sitting on my Kindle for a while and I've rediscovered it rediscovered it and I'm like oh yeah I remember this so I've actually put these books in a, a folder of their own in my kindle like I organize, organize my kindle via collections I've actually I've actually done a what's on my kindle video and I'll li link that here just in case you're curious to see how I organize my video but since that video I've created a collection of books that are for stories featuring characters who are journalists and this book is sitting in there as well so this book is book one in the Jason Wade mystery series. And the next two books are Every Fear and a Perfect Grave. So this book sort of sits based on, I guess, the titles. You can probably tell that this is more of a mystery or thriller. I think these books could sit equally in each of these categories, depending on how, whether they disguise who the villain is and they let you figure it out and they leave you enough clues to figure it out. So to me, it definitely sounds like a thriller. It could fit into the mystery genre as well, depending on how it's written. Unfortunately, book three was written in 2007, so book three was A Perfect Grave. I'm guessing this isn't re really a series, but it's a, at the moment it's a trilogy, unless the author comes back and continues writing these books. But yeah, it's really sad when an author stops writing a series, because it's definitely advertised as a series. Instead of, they don't use the word trilogy in the marketing title of the books. Maybe he wrapped up the series early because there wasn't enough readers. I'm not 100% sure. I have no idea whether he plans to write because I've tried looking for a website and I don't think I could find one for this particular author or maybe I wasn't searching hard enough. So here's a bit about the book. And that's The Dying Hour, not the second or third books. So I'm not sure I didn't look into the plot of those. So Jason Wade joins Seattle Star's internship program as a rookie reporter. Haunted by his past, Wade pursues the story of Karen Harding, a college student whose car was found abandoned on a lonely stretch of highway in the Pacific Northwest. How could this beloved young woman with such an altruistic nature simply vanish? So I found this really interesting because she seems like you know, this perfect girl just completely vanishes and all they've got left to sort of trace her as the car. I am quite curious to, to find out what actually happened to Karen Hardy. So the third book in my want to read list is yeah, is The Poet by Michael Connolly. This book will also feature in another book haul that I need to film right after this one. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And here's a bit about the book. The apparent suicide of his policeman brother sets Denver crime reporter Jack McAvoy on edge. I'm not sure if I actually pronounced that right either, his the character's name. Surprised at the circumstances of his brother's death prompts Jack to look into a whole series of police suicides and puts him on the trail of a cop killer whose victims are selected all too carefully. Not only that, but they all leave suicide notes drawn from the poems of Edgar Allan Poe in their wake. I absolutely loved that book purely because of the description. It had nothing to do with the cover. It was just the fact that it's called The Poet and it's about police suicides and they their suicide notes are taken from poems by a famous author and I thought that's so that's such an intriguing premise. Based on that premise you can probably tell that the poet is a crime novel. The good news for this however is the poet is now a trilogy. Book two is The Scarecrow and the third book is Fair Warning. The reason I've got the Fair Warning sorry, fair warning as book three question mark because the books aren't linked together on the book series page at the time when I was researching these books. So it had book three, but it features its character. So I'm assuming it's definitely a part of the trilogy, but it's just not linked at the moment. And I will point out there is a huge gap between the publishing of the poet and the last book. The author has obviously gone on and published other things and then has come back to this series. So maybe the book before this 
book two on the list, The Dying Hour. Maybe that author will do a similar thing. Maybe they will eventually come back and revisit this series another time. Book four is False Truth by Diane Capri and Beth Dexter. And it is a part of the Jordan Fox mystery series. So here's a little bit about the book. TV reporter Jordan Fox has one last chance to get justice for her mother before the killers return to finish what they started. And Jordan is their number one target as she searches for her mother's killer with the help from the sexy young cop and even sexier new craft brewer in town who both want to protect her. Sort of based on that plot, this book probably sits in the mystery and thriller categories. There is a romantic subplot and I was quite surprised that this wasn't sitting in like a romantic thriller or romantic suspense but it hasn't been marketed that way so perhaps the romantic subplot or love triangle really is a subplot and isn't a huge focal point for the story so maybe that's why it's not marketed as a romance. I'm not too sure because I haven't actually read this. What is interesting about this, it's an 11 part serial, so each book is more like an episode of a larger story. So from what I understand, I think you need to read all of the books in order because it is a serial. Judging by the reviews, some people, when they downloaded the book, they weren't aware they were getting a shorter book and the fact that it was an installment within a larger story. And I found that quite interesting because it does say that it's short, it says that it's a serial, and it says episode one. So I'm not 100% sure what happens there. There was enough reviews to warrant me to sort of mention that there were some people that were unaware that they were getting a short book and it is a part of a serial. So that's why I wanted to mention it. I think maybe people liked the cover and just clicked purchase or download because it was part of, I think it is a part of Kindle Unlimited. So maybe that's what prompted people to buy. But um, I just found the reviews, some of the reviews quite strange because to me it was quite obvious what you were getting with this book. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just I thought it was explicitly clear, but other people didn't. The fifth book in my want to read list is The Secret Patient by Borgen W. Smith. So here's a bit about the book. The story starts off with a character called Nathan going to hospital for a blood test but he never leaves. Prize winning journalist Elizabeth is in a slump. After taking down the mayor in a career defining story, nothing else measures up. Desperate for anything, she follows a vague lead from a spooked informant to the hospital. I'm interested in reading this story for several reasons and the first being the fact that it's sort of set in a hospital and it has something to do with blood work and so when you have a blood test or even a you have your bone marrow tested the reason why you would have that is if a doctor thought you might have leukemia they would test your bone marrow and all of that like your blood work, bone marrow, it goes off to the haematology department and that's where these things are tested within a pathology lab and I've actually worked in a haematology department. It was an enjoyable ex experience and an enjoyable part of my career and I, I really liked that and I'm still quite intrigued by medicine. I want to see how much of that actually plays into the story. If It probably is very little, but I thought it would be nice to revisit that particular area of my life again. So naturally the, the genres for this story are medical thriller, mystery, with a featuring a women's sleuth. What I found interesting was, based on the reviews, I found this book quite polarising. People either loved it or they hated it. Well, they either liked it or they didn't like it. But even though it's quite divided into the... It has a full range of reviews, but people either loved it or they didn't. But even though it has that in the reviews, it's I still want to read it but yeah I just found that really interesting that the, the reviews are so polarizing it definitely has a few five four three two and one and everyone seems to have a, quite a strong opinion so either they liked it or they didn't like it and I just thought hmm interesting this next group of books are books that I've already read and once again I have included a little bit about the plot so I will read that directly from my phone just to keep things a little bit consistent. Book five is Absolute Proof by Peter James. Now I've got it, I think I purchased this at an airport, I think it was, I know I purchased this beautiful hardback in an airport in an airport WH Smith and it's absolutely beautiful. So this is actually the first Peter James novel that I've read and yep yeah, it's definitely one of my favourite books. 
Absolute Proof is fast-paced with a dash of religious conspiracy. So if you love Dan Brown's Robert Langdon series, then you probably will like this book as well. Journalist Ross Hunter receives an unexpected call from History of Art professor Dr. Harry F. Cook, who claims he has been given absolute proof of God's existence. This one phone call triggers a, a series of events where Ross is hunted down in the pursuit for the truth. One week later, Ross finds Dr. Harry Cook dead after he seeks him out at his home. So naturally, to the best of my knowledge, Absolute Proof by Peter James is a standalone. I'm yet to see any other advertisements for other books featuring this character. So Ross Hunter. So at the moment, it just appears to be a standalone. I would put this book in the conspiracy thriller category, but for some reason, uh, or a religious thriller, but for some reason, this book has been put in religious the religious fiction section and I wouldn't put it in religious fiction because um, it's not following a Christian seeking out absolute proof of the existence of God. It's someone who's definitely questioning it and not always believing what he's researching either. So that's why I wouldn't put it in religious, like religious fiction because I didn't think it's not like the Left Behind series, which I would definitely put that in religious fiction, but it's different. I guess I don't get to make those choices. And as I sort of alluded to already, I really wish there was more books in this series. I wish there was more books in this series featuring this character because it's, I absolutely loved it and it's one of my favourite books. Book 7 is The Anonymous Source by A.C. Fuller. So here's a bit about the books. One year after the 9-11 attacks, court reporter Alex Vane discovers the story of Lifetime. After his editor buries the story, his source turns up dead. The events pull Alex into a violent world of media conspiracy. So again, this particular book is a conspiracy thriller, as you can sort of base on the wording of the book, the book's blurb. And this is the first book in a five book series. If you sign up to the author's email newsletter, you can get a prequel I think it's a prequel short story for free. The, the prequel short story is quite good. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's a novella. I can't remember, but it's called The Cut Line, and I really loved. I really loved it. And basically, in terms of journalism, the cut line is basically the little quote underneath a image in a newspaper. Currently, I have all five Kindle books on my Kindle naturally, or in my Kindle app on my phone. And at the moment, I've stopped reading the series because I'm waiting for more of the audio books to be made. There's one audiobook that's already been made and I've listened to that because I like using Kindle Whisper Sync for voice because that's how I read and I can get more, I can read more books as I'm doing things with this particular feature. Due to a time crunch I'm, I tend to focus on books that have a audiobook so I can either read along or I can do something around the house and read and then come back to the book later because I don't always have a a lot of time to sit down and physically read. Book eight is Don't Tell Meg by Paul Teague. I know I mentioned this book a lot. I've mentioned this book quite a few times and I'm mentioning it again here because it fits within this category. Here's a bit about the story before I dive into why I keep mentioning this book. Radio journalist Pete Bailey's relationship with his wife is on the rocks. They've been trying for a baby with no avail and you get the impression that they've been trying for a long time. On a working weekend he falls for this charming TV reporter and has an affair that creates a trail of chaos which, re which results in five people losing their lives. I'm 10% of my way through this book and I've set it down just due to shiny object syndrome. It's not that I don't find this book entertaining and I'm not connected to the character or anything. It's just bigger, better, shinier things. And I'm also, there's no audiobook for this either. So I have to physically sit down and read. I have to literally sit down and, and physically read and turn the pages. So it's become a little bit difficult for me to read it because just time. Again, that's another reason why. That's, that's really the main reason why I've yet to finish it. But I do want to get back to this particular book. This book is the first in a trilogy bearing the same name, Don't Tell Meg. The other books are, I think, I'll check. So it's Don't Tell Meg, book two is The Murder Place, and book three is The Forgotten Children. So they all feature these characters in each three of the books. So yes, yeah, so I'm really excited to read that book and hopefully finish the trilogy. Again, I need to sort of make time to actually sit down and read. Again, what I found interesting about this book is it, it is a psychological thriller and what I didn't realise about psychological thrillers is they're generally written in the first person 
and it's a way of adding suspense. So because it's written in first person, past tense, you, you get the sense that this guy is about to kind of screw up his life and because he kind of tells you that in, in so many words. I got quite maybe emotional. Yeah, emotional is the right word. I got really upset and annoyed. Like it definitely created some type of emotion. It definitely helps me trigger some type of emo emotion for me because I was reading the book going, no, don't do that, you idiot. But if he doesn't do that, there's no story. So this is a really good book recommended even though I haven't technically finished it, but I am reading it. Book nine is Fatal Enemy by Diane Capri and this is book one in the Jess Kimball thriller series. So this book is a short story that was full of suspense, intrigue and was over way too soon and because it's a short story I've decided not to share the plot with you because I've there's no way for me to do it without completely spoiling the story. This book is a part of a 10 book series and it's a complete series so if you really love to do this you can just sit down and binge this entire series and it's really, I really loved it. It's well written and I do want to read the other books in the series as well and they have this book, well the book that I read, this book, Fatal Enemy, I read it via Kindle Whisper Sync for Voice, so there has an audio book, so it's something that I can definitely read and finish. I'm talking about the series, not the book. Finish the book. And just to let you know, the rest of the books in this series are full-length novels. They're complete stories on their own. So I guess you don't have to read the, the books in order but it is generally better to read the books in a series in order because it's a little less confusing that way and you don't get any spo accidental spoilers in the later books about the earlier books. So the genres for that for Fatal Enemy are private investigative mystery and legal thrillers. So the tenth book on this list is Deadshot by RJ Patterson and is the first book in the Cal Murphy thriller series. The series features a journalist called Cal Murphy who works for a small town newspaper and he accidentally stumbles across the town's first serial killer. Well, I guess he didn't really stumble upon it. He call he was called into the story because he's a he works in the sports section and it's to do with an athlete and he was called in and he accidentally pieces together similar aspects of this crime that were also present in other crimes and this links these crimes together creating the work of the serial killer and he also unintentionally uncovers the town's darkest secrets so naturally not everyone is interested in him uncovering the truth behind these series of matters at the moment this is a 12 book series I'm not a hundred percent sure if the series is complete yet maybe it is and the categories for this series are mystery and crime thrillers. The last book was published on the 30th September 2018 so maybe it is finished maybe 12 does sound like a good number to end a series because you've got three lots of four books. Book 11 is Last Girl Gone by J.G. Heatherton. So here's a bit about the story. Laura Chambers returns home after being fired from the Boston Globe. So in a sense, she returns home like with, with her tail between her legs, almost in, in admits defeat. So her new job is boring until she uncovers the work of a serial killer. Just to give you an idea about the, the way this book is written, it's probably more of a mystery than a crime thriller. It's definitely heavy on the mystery side because you don't actually know who the villain is until the very end of the book. So I reached the halfway point in the book and I still had no idea as to who the serial killer was. And as I mentioned, it wasn't until that final hour that you actually got to see who was committing all of these crimes. So the genres for this book are crime thriller, mystery and as a subgenre, women's sleuths. And again, this book is another book that's a part of the series. It's advertised that it will be a part of the series, but there's only one book present. Actually, there is a second book. It's advertised as part of the series. When you click on the series page, you only see book one. Book two isn't quite linked, isn't linked yet, and it's possibly because it's on pre-order. And it's on pre-order until July the 7th, which is the date of the book launch. What I found really fascinating with this book was the pre-order amount is £9.41, or if you 
you in the US, it's $12.82 plus taxes. And that's for the ebook. That isn't for the paperback. So the ebook is all is higher than the paperback price because if you look at the back of the paperback book, this book costs $8.99, £8.99 pence for this book. It costs more than a paperback, the ebook. It's such a strange pricing. Well, it's, it's just so high. I, I just, I'm clearly not over it, but the price is extraordinary and obviously this is a traditionally published book and I think they do this because they're trying to encourage you to buy the hardback and the paperback because they want to earn more money back on those books which is fair enough. But, um, book 12 is Sanctus by Simon Twain and this is book one in a trilogy and this trilogy is almost a it's almost a serial where you need to read each book in order and if you don't read the first one if you dive into the second one the second one probably won't make make much sense and it will probably spoil the first book for you so I really do if you want to read these books I really do encourage you to read them in order so book one is obviously Sanctus book two is the key and the third one is the tower and as I said, you need to read them together. And I've actually read all three of these books and they were amazing. So once again, if you do like Dan Brown's Robert Langdon series, then you probably will like this as well. In a way, it is a religious conspiracy thriller. So if you like that kind of thing, you will love this trilogy as well. So here's a bit about the book. Liv Abdenson, New York crime reporter, discovers that her missing brother had joined a monastery in Turkey and had died after flinging himself off the cliff face of the citadel in a seemingly symbolic gesture. The news ignites a search for the truth and a journey to discover her true identity. She discovers that her brother has died after watching it unfold on the news. It's quite a shock start to her story and this book is definitely a true page turner. I, I read, I think I read it in a, within a few days. I read it quite a long time ago so it's hard to remember how long it took me to read it but I remember reading it quite quickly and diving straight into the next book and then the next book. Now that I'm talking about this there is a part of me that wants to reread the trilogy only because I found it really enjoyable. This author has has gone on to write other books within the thriller genre but I'm yet to read them and as I said earlier this book sits in the conspiracy thriller genre and the entire trilogy does as well. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to include this next book in this particular list but I decided well I'm curating a list of books of characters who are journalists who I'd be an idiot if I'd include, include mine. But book 13, technically I've read this book a lot. In the process of revising a book, you, you end up reading it quite a bit. So I feel like I've read my book to death, so it counts. Book 13 is Missing by A.D. Hay, and that is my pen name. After all of the umming and ahhing about whether I wanted to include my own book, I went and recorded the podcast episode and I got to this particular section of the podcast and something went wrong with the recording and it's I'm having to re-record this section. So I sort of feel like I'm torturing myself twice, which is great. But back to the book. Missing is actually a mystery thriller novel as well novella as you can see it's like it's quite thin and you can you can read it in a day. I think it would probably take maybe five hours to read it or you could read it over a longer sitting. That's how long it would probably take to read. So what I'm going to do is just like all the other books, I'm going to read you the blurb of my book just so you get an understanding of what happens in the story. So this story is a bit of a murder mystery and it does have a whodunit element which is why I sort of think Looking back, it probably fits better in the mystery genre than the crime thriller genre. James is the chief editor of a small newspaper. It's hardly captivating work. He's bored. But all of this is about to change. Late one evening, he returns home to discover that his longtime girlfriend and journalist Valentin has left. Early the next morning, James fails to reallocate her assigned story. To avoid blank space in the culture section and losing his job, he decides to write the story on the local museum's latest acquisition, Escalibur. But there's one thing he didn't count on. Escalibur is missing and a dead body is at the crime scene. As his investigations commence, James unravels a tangled web of betrayal, kidnapping and murder. But his fact finding hasn't gone unrecognised. The wrong people have started to notice and there will be consequences, dire consequences. So if you want to try this book out for free and leave an honest review either on Amazon or Goodreads and you're not in Kindle Unlimited because this book is in Kindle Unlimited at the moment then go along to authoradhay.com 
forward slash missing hyphen ARC to receive the view review copy. And just in case you're wondering, ARC is an advanced reader copy. At the moment, I'm trying to generate reviews from people who have read the book just to leave honest feedback to help other readers decide whether they want to read my book or not because I am a relatively new author and I know sometimes it can be a little difficult to know whether a particular author is going to be right for you especially if you've never heard of them before so if you would like a free copy then go along to that web address and just put your email and your name in the appropriate fields and you'll be sent a copy of my book or you'll receive a an email and in that email there'll be a big button that says download the book and you just when you click that it'll open up another page so you can download it directly to whatever device that you want to read it on and it's relatively easy you don't have to be a tech genius to work it out. Anyone can use it, including my dad. Sorry, dad, if you're watching this. This link will only be available for a limited amount of time. And because this is on YouTube, if you're really, if you're watching this three months from now, from the date that it was uploaded, the book will probably, the link probably will not work anymore. Sorry. But if you are watching this three months from now, the book is in Kindle Unlimited. So if you are a part of the subscription, you can kind of get it as a part of the KU, your regular KU subscription. So you can just download it for free. Sort of, not really. I guess my question for you is, do you love reading books featuring journalists who investigate crimes? And if so, do you know of any other thriller novels featuring journalists as main characters that you could recommend? Or books within the crime mystery Mystery or thriller genres that feature characters who are amateur sleuths. I want to hear from you so leave your suggestions in the comments section below or if you want to come on over to the Thriller Novel Nerd book club and let me know your suggestions. If you like this video then give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel and want to be notified about more videos just like this then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload more videos. Thank you for watching and happy reading, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Thriller Novel Nerd podcast. If you're new to this podcast or want to be notified about more episodes just like this, then click the subscribe button right now. I'm your host, Amelia D. Hay, and I'll see you in two weeks' time for another episode. Happy reading, everybody.